Uh, in this part of the lecture, we shall uh, study the effects of changes in the field current on the working of a synchronous motor. Uh, field windings uh, in case of synchronous motor are on the motor circuit and generally they have uh, an additional variable resistor in series with field uh, windings. This additional variable resistor helps us to get a control on the field current and we want to study the effects of the changes of this field current on the working of this synchronous motor. Uh, we shall explain the working uh, of this uh, synchronous motor with the help of uh, phasor diagrams and uh, we have uh, already learned how to sketch phasor diagram for a synchronous motor. We can see that the phase voltage for a synchronous motor that is equal to the voltage drop across this inductive reactance plus the voltage drop across this resistance plus this internal generated voltage Ea. That is uh, V phase that is equal to uh, and we have already learned how to sketch the phasor diagram corresponding to this uh, uh, voltage balance equation uh, and a simplified phasor diagram can be obtained by just ignoring this term. We know that for real synchronous generators Ra is much much less than xs therefore we can just ignore this term and sketch the phasor diagram so phasor diagram by taking this v phase as the reference voltage uh, we have uh, this phasor v phi and uh, what will be phasor for ea for the case of synchronous motor the phasor for ea that will lag behind the phasor for v phase that is Ea is somewhere over here. And uh, this angle, we call this angle the torque angle. Uh, what is phasor for uh, this uh, thing? That is over here. V phase is the sum of this voltage and this voltage because we have ignored it. So this voltage plus this voltage that is J I A X S and uh, what is phasor for I A uh, we know that this thing J adds an angle of 90 degree to I A so I A must be perpendicular to this phasor that is this phasor must be perpendicular to I A so I A is Here is Ia. We also know that this Ea uh, that is produced due to uh, this uh, rotor magnetic field Br and uh, that Ea is given by this relation. Ea is equal to K phi omega. For the case of synchronous motor, this uh, rotor always rotates with synchronous speed and synchronous speed is determined by the frequency of the voltage signals that are applied to these armature windings. So this dot, this omega is constant and what about phi? Phi can be changed by changing the field current. If you increase field current, uh, this phi will increase and that will in turn result into increase in Ea. So what will happen to Ea? As we increase IF with increase in the field current, EA will increase. So the length of this phasor will increase. What will happen to the uh, power that is generated by the uh, machine, uh, by the synchronous motor? We know that the power, output power, that is equal to the load torque, that is the load which is connected to this uh, rotor that will apply a torque so output power is equal to load torque multiplied by speed of the rotation of the rotor so again this uh, speed is constant uh, for synchronous motor speed of rotor is always equal to the synchronous speed and this load uh, applied torque that only depends upon the load connected to the motor uh, field current has no effect on this load torque so that means changing the field current 
will have no effect on this output power. This will remain constant. And uh, furthermore, uh, we also know that the power which is converted from electrical power into mechanical power that is given by this relation. T V phase E A sine delta over omega X S. Uh, we have derived uh, this relation in one of uh, our previous lectures. So here there is no omega over here. So if we ignore the losses in the uh, motor, then converted power is equal to the output power. That is output power is approximately equal to this expression. And over here, uh, V phase, what is that? That is the uh, supply voltage. And we assume that that supply voltage is constant. Xs, uh, once you have designed the synchronous motor, Xs is constant. Uh, Ea, that depends upon field current. What about sine delta? We shall observe it from the phasor diagram. Uh, in this phasor diagram, we see that this length from uh, from here to here, also this length, this length also equal to this length. What is that? That is equal to this length multiplied by sine of this angle. That is, this is equal to E A sine delta. So, since in this expression, V phase is constant, X S is constant. So, converted power is proportional to E A sine delta. That is, this length is proportional to the power of the motor, power of the synchronous motor. So, since uh, uh, by increasing field current, E A, length of this vector will increase. However, the output power has not changed. So, this length, the vertical component of this vector will remain, the co remain constant. How is that possible? How we can achieve the situation that is length of this vector increased but the vertical component of this vector does not increase. How is that possible? That is only possible if this start angle delta is changed. So, with increased field current we shall have this situation. So when IF is increased, EA will increase, here it has been increased, however uh, this uh, vector, this phasor will move along this line so that the vertical component of this vector remains the same because the output power is same. We have not changed the load connected to it, so output power is same and hence uh, the length of this vector will be increased because of increase in field current and this vector will move along this line and uh, uh, what will be this phasor so th that will be over here and uh, what will be phasor for current phasor for current will be perpendicular to this phasor that is somewhere over here and furthermore we notice that this length this phasor j i a Xs, this phasor is uh, longer than this phasor. Since Xs is constant, that means Ia will decrease. So, length of this phasor will decrease and will become perpendicular to this phasor. So, we have uh, this somewhere over here. That corresponds to new situation let's call them this is ea1 and let's call it ea2 and similarly this ia1 and the new current to be equal to ia2 uh, if you further increase field current again length of this vector uh, will increase it will move along this line so new situation i depict it over here This is EA3, 
moves along this line so that vertical component of this phasor remains the same and this is J I A X S and then uh, what will be a uh, phasor for this I A 3 that perpendicular to this one that is over here and length of this vector further reduced so this is I A 3 let's further increase this field current so length of this phasor will further increase we shall have uh, this situation Uh, this is EA3 it has moved along this line so that vertical component of this phasor which is proportional to the power remains the same and uh, then what will be phasor for this uh, J I A X S that will be over here that is uh, J I A let's call it I A4 X S and uh, then what will be phasor for IA perpendicular to this one and uh, what about uh, magnitude of IA so you can see that length of this phasor is larger than this length of this phasor so that means IA magnitude of IA has increased so IA4 will be larger than this IA3 and will be perpendicular to this thing so I draw it over here perpendicular to this one this phasor is perpendicular to IA because of this J and uh, uh, you can draw more cases that is for another increase a further increase in IF there will be further increase in EA and hence uh, magnitude of IA will further increase and it will become more leading than rephase. So what we can see from this phasor diagram we can see that for smaller field current IA lags behind rephase this current IA drawn by the synchronous motor lags behind the uh, supply voltage that means for low field current this synchronous motor behaves as an inductive load what happens when you increase IF at this particular situation this particular situation this IA3 is in phase with V5 this current IA will be in phase with V5 that is uh, with increase in field current this motor will now behave as a resistive load and still further increase in IF what will happen if you further increase IF this is situation depicted by IA4 what is that we can see that this current leads the voltage so current which is flowing in the motor that leads the voltage and hence this motor is now behaving as a capacitive load that means that uh, for low excitation low excitation current when this uh, motor is under excited this synchronous motor will behave as inductive load and when this is over excited then it will behave as a capacitive load and uh, generally we draw another curve which uh, gives uh, this information in another form uh, this curve is between the field current and armature current so if you we can see that uh, if uh, we have a low field current armature current is larger magnitude of armature current is larger if we increase field current this magnitude of IA gradually decreases up to certain point so if you uh, have uh, so here is the uh, plot between IF and IA as you increase IF IA gradually decreases and then further increase in IF results into increase in, in the magnitude of IA 
So this is relation between the two currents. Uh, at low field currents, we have larger armature current. As you increase field current, this armature current gradually decreases. Further increase in field current will result into an increase in armature current. In other observation, uh, at low excitations, uh, when field current is smaller, this uh, thing, uh, this uh, motor behaves as an inductive load. And so, uh, before uh, this point, uh, this is inductive load. This uh, motor is behaving as an inductive load, load with a lagging power factor. And uh, increase in IF, the motor behaves as a load with leading power factor. Uh, this curve uh, is called V curve and uh, uh, in the lab experiments you will practically obtain this curve for a synchronous motor uh, which is there in electrical machines lab. So in summary what we can conclude is that uh, at low field currents this motor behaves as an inductive load that is it consumes uh, reactive power. What is in inductor? You know that inductor consumes reactive power. So low IF, low field current, this behaves as inductive load which means that it consumes reactive power. And uh, then if you increase field current, uh, there is a step, there is a time when it will become uh, a resistive load and further increase in IF will make it a capacitive load that is it will provide a reactive power. So this last feature of synchronous motor that is very useful that can be utilized in industrial processes for power factor correction. You know that uh, uh, industries are not only charged for the power that uh, is consumed by the industry but they are also charged based upon the, their power factor because low power factor uh, is not desirable low power factor results into high line losses therefore uh, these synchronous motors can be utilized to improve the power factor uh, because this, uh, most of the load in industry that is inductive load and we can use some of synchronous motors which will be over excited synchronous motors which will behave as capacitive load and therefore will in improve the power factor of that, uh, uh, that uh, industry. Uh, sometimes uh, they only uh, uh, design these synchronous motors for the only purpose of improving uh, this uh, uh, power factor those uh, motors, synchronous motors, are also called synchronous capacitors. So synchronous motors are associated with uh, certain problems. Uh, the uh, one problem is that these motors are not self-starting. So next uh, we talk about the starting issues of synchronous motors. What are starting problems with synchronous motors? And we shall also talk about the solutions to those problems.